Starlo here. Welcome to my new show, Obscurity with Starlo. To let you know what this series is about, I take a look at things that many people probably forgotten about. So it's my job in this series to check it out and see if anybody remembers any of these things. So on our first episode, we're going to be taking a look at Mother Goose's Nursery Rhymes. Well, one of them actually. You see, nursery rhymes have been around for decades. But nowadays, they're basically in the style of HD sing-along videos on YouTube. Even Disney did a similar thing too. But did you know that stuff like this have existed in VHS form? And I like to talk about something that goes all the way back to the 80s. The Mother Goose Treasury video, apparently, mainly existed as a VHS for, wait a second, that's the box art? It looks more like they just copied and pasted a generic nursery rhyme related clip art and then called it a day. It's also considered to be the most ambitious made for video children's series ever! Really, this is ambitious. Also, despite having a cartoon looking box art, it's actually a live action series with live actors, puppets, green screen, you name it. And yes, apparently the same guy worked on two Disney Channel shows back in the 80s as well. See? It says it right there. You can't miss it. And what were those shows, you ask? Why, they were Welcome to Pooh Corner and Dumbo Circus. So this guy went from Disney to making a nursery rhyme show that has nothing to do with it. Let's give it a watch, shall we? Dear Mother Goose, when she wanted to wander, would ride on the back of a very fine gander. High in the sky, she goes right well, above. It's okay. I mean, the they had to work with what they had. Tell us a story. Sing us a song. Yes, Left Take Coast Television. We'll the same company who made those two Disney shows. So here's a little trivia question for you. What year did this series come out? Come on, you can guess it, you can guess it. 1987. It came out in 1987. <laughs> read us a story, please read us a story. Is it story time? Or have you done all your chores? Oh, oh yes, 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 I have, yes, I have, yes, I have two. Yeah. So far, on both the background design and the puppet design, we're looking at a 3 out of 10. Yes, apparently this is a lot and a lot of unnecessary padding. Also, despite being made for kids, there isn't really a single actual child in this. Every child is either a puppet or played by a full-grown adult. Like, why aren't there any real kids in this? Ooh, how about a nice story about a brave and handsome goose, huh? And there's where all the budget went for that giant goose costume. That's Bertram. He is one of the main characters besides Mother Goose. Keith are wonderful flyers and helpful and loyal, not to mention brave and handsome. Obviously, this was made in 1987, the late 80s. However, comparing it to other things that were made in the same decade, I don't know, like stuff like the monstrosity that is the Garbage Pail Kids. Jim Henson had a lot of things, like he had Fraggle Rock. That was an okay TV series. And as for movie-wise... He made a few Muppet movies, as well as... So yeah, Jim Henson had much better effort in this. Except for the Dark Crystal. But Labyrinth, oh man, I think every girl just liked it because of David Bowie. But going to the non-Jim Henson thing, Garbage Pail Kids, that is not for children! And keep in mind, this Mother Goose TV 
show is made by the same people who made Welcome to Pooh Corner and Dumbo Circus. And those two shows were actually pretty good and full of pretty interesting effort. What if I could? If I couldn't, how could I? Uh, I couldn't without... I could. Could I? Uh, could you without you could? Could you? I don't think I understand that, Riddle. Nope. I don't understand it at all. Neither do we. A was an archer. Shot his arrow so high. B was a baker. A baking a pie. C was the captain. All covered with lace. This is known for their padding. I'm not joking. We've learned G H I J K L. Are you ready for M N O P and all the rest? Okay, whatever you say. The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts, made some tarts, made some tarts. The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts, all on a summer's day. Oh man, those tarts look so good! Gimme, gimme, gimme! The King of Hearts called for the tarts, and we've been made full sore. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, the only violence in this is somebody getting hit in the head with a balloon. Farmer sowing his corn that kept the cock that crowed in the morn that wake the priest all shaven and shorn that married the man all tattered and torn. The kiss the man, no the lord, the milk the cow with the crumpled horn. Tossed the dog that worried the cat that chased the rat that ate the moth that lay in the house that Jack built. That lay in the house that Jack built. I can see why that rhyme is so tiring now. But the rhymes I know are about numbers, cause that's what I love. All kinds of numbers. So we have a man that loves letters. And now, we have a woman who loves numbers. One, two, buckle your shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, good dad hand. Eleven, twelve, dig and delve. Thirteen, fourteen, made the quarantine. Fifteen, sixteen, made the quarantine. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, made waiting. Nineteen, twenty. Oh, my head's spinning. I wonder if she can go up all the way to a hundred. Would that be possible? Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and can't tell where to find them. Leave them alone and they will come home, wagging their tails behind them. And she took her little crook, determined for to find them. She found her sheep, but she did not They left all their tails behind them. Wait, what? I'm very good at finding things, you know. Oh, thank you, Bertram. It happened that day as Bertram did stray into a meadow nearby that he spied their tails side by side. They oh, have detachable tails? Heaving a sigh, she wiped her eye, for she was glad to find them. She loved her sheep, and so Bo Peep tacked all their tails behind them. Tacked all their tails behind them. How clever and thoughtful. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and can't tell where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home, wagging their tails behind them. Heaving a sigh, she wiped her eye, for she was glad to find them. She loved her sheep and so Bo Peep tacked all their tails behind them. Tacked all their tails behind them. <laughs> I'm so funny. It happened that day that Bertram did stray into a meadow nearby. And he espied their tails side by side, all hung on a tree to dry. Bravo! Bravo! All right, what's the next rhyme? There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. Along came friend Bertram, who set them to rights. They earned bread and jam. Oh my, what a sight! This is not the old woman who lived in a shoe I'm familiar with. Oh well, it is what it is. Look, Mother Goose, the first star. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Each episode ends with Mother Goose and Bertram looking at the sky. And, you know, that sort of stuff. Good night. Good night, Mother Goose. So that was the Mother Goose treasury. Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. I mean, they didn't have much of a budget, so they had to work with what they had. 
but it was worth it. For the 80s, it was okay. I mean, it went better as the years went by. I'm surprised people forgot about this. And some people actually really remember it. Again, going back to the people who made it, I can understand why they decided to work with Disney on a few things. Because, well, they didn't have much of a budget around the time Disney Channel was doing all that weird stuff. But nowadays, we take a look at Disney Channel now, and, well, it's still the same, I guess. Also, after the shows like Welcome to Pooh Corner, they ended up getting lots and lots and lots.